We're diving into the future of brain health with Dr. Richard Isaacson. He chats about biomarkers, a cholesterol test for the brain, and how new blood-based tests are revolutionizing early detection and treatment for conditions like Alzheimer's. Let's get into it. Biomarkers are an umbrella term for anything that you can use biologically or medically to determine whether or not a person either may have a disease or may be at risk for developing a disease or something along those lines. So for example, most people are aware of what we call cholesterol biomarkers, blood tests uh, that are cholesterol tests, look at things like your total amount of cholesterol that's in your blood, your HDL, which is the good cholesterol, even though it's maybe not as good as uh, we, we used to think in the past. LDL cholesterol is the bad cholesterol. We also have triglycerides. And really that's your cholesterol panel that you go to the doctor's office every year or so, and then you check. And if you have elevated cholesterol, that is a marker or a biomarker for potential problems in the blood vessel. And when it comes to um, cognitive health, brain health, prevention of Alzheimer's disease, Lewy body dementia, Parkinson's disease, one of the most exciting things that I spend my time with every day uh, are the blood-based biomarkers that try to identify proteins in the blood of a person who is not yet having symptoms related to a neurodegenerative disease, but really tell us, tell the physicians and the, and the researchers that there may be something going on silently a decade before the symptoms begin. Blood-based biomarkers to me are oftentimes focused on early detection, um, early diagnosis before symptoms, uh, but they can also absolutely be used for diagnosing a person uh, with symptoms. So if a person is having progressive short-term memory loss, problems with changes in mood, behavior, losing items, getting lost while driving, having trouble managing finances, then potentially a good screening test uh, could be a blood test uh, for a protein called amyloid protein. There's another protein uh, called tau and P-tau-217 is the type of tau protein that we look for that is probably the most helpful. And using blood-based biomarkers to try to diagnose um, a brain disease is something that you probably haven't heard too much about in the past, but you're going to be hearing a lot about in the future. But normally in the field of, to say, for example, Alzheimer's disease, uh, when a person is uh, just becoming symptomatic, some of the biomarkers that are used to diagnose the disease would be uh, most commonly um, either a spinal tap, often known as a lumbar puncture, where they put a needle in the back, get the fluid, and in the fluid, we can also detect amyloid proteins and tau proteins, and there's a ratio that we look at. Or another biomarker could be looking at a, a brain scan, a, a radiology image, for example, what we call an amyloid PET scan. They inject you with a, a tracer. It's a labeling agent that binds to the amyloid in the brain. They didn't take a picture. There's a little bit of radioactivity. So there's a little bit of radiation that you have to be cautious of. And then they do the scan and the brain basically lights up. If there's amyloid, there's also tracers now that actually can label tau. But to me, the future of neurodegenerative disease care and the future of neurodegenerative disease prevention is eventually going to be blood-based biomarkers. And the thing that we're most excited about are um, bringing these tests at home uh, for people to use, brings down the cost exponentially, it increases access exponentially. We can mail a little finger prick card, take a little drop of blood, put it on a card, and we're really making a ton of progress on this and we're excited. The earlier we can understand and diagnose a person, the more likely we are to have success in treating, you know, neurodegenerative diseases start in the brain decades before the first symptom uh, begins, whether it's a motor symptom like slowness of movement or tremor or a cognitive symptom like memory loss. So the goal here in, in preventive neurology is to use blood-based biomarker tests eventually to diagnose early. And then we're really putting also a lot of time and, and effort into is evaluating response to care. So can we use a biomarker, just like we use a cholesterol test, where we do a screening test, we say, aha, okay, you're your LDL cholesterol is high. That's worrisome. But we can look at your heart vessels, actually, just like we do a brain scan. And that's, for example, a part of a coronary calcium scan. And you can see how much calcium is built up. Then we're going to give a cholesterol medication or change your diet or change your exercise. And then six months or a year later, we can repeat the blood test, the cholesterol test. And we say, aha, the LDL has come down. Your risk factors have been modified. Your risk of a heart attack or stroke are now lower. And it's the same thing for brain disease. We're trying to develop the cholesterol test for the brain, where we're not just able to diagnose and assess risk, but we're also trying to understand the trajectory of change over time. If I'm going to tell someone to exercise on a regular basis and manage their diabetes and high blood pressure better and 
take this vitamin or take this supplement or take this medication or even take one of these new um, anti-amyloid drugs, you know, by an IV infusion for people that are symptomatic uh, related to uh, the earliest symptomatic phases of Alzheimer's disease. We can then use biomarkers to assess the effectiveness or evaluate the effectiveness of the treatments that are personalized for that patient. And then we can understand if that person's on the right path and we can understand do the treatments need to be continued or if they're not working, maybe we need to pull back. We need to try something else. So biomarkers to me are all encompassing. And I think we're most excited about developing what we call the cholesterol test for the brain, which will include a panel of tests, whether it's amyloid or tau or NFL or this and that. We have a, a host of over 120 markers uh, that we're looking at really closely and putting together some really, really exciting measurements and, and protocols to assess risk and evaluate change over time. We hope you enjoyed this video. To access a free Mastering Brain Health course led by Dr. Richard Isaacson, visit ind.org slash learn. And to directly contribute to IND's research efforts, visit ind.org slash donate.